All right, so with Google+, Plus, we've seen that we can share content, just like Twitter. We're going to see that there's similarities in the other networks as well. They all have some similarities. So here's where we start to differentiate some things. Um, whatever we've posted on Google+, Plus, we have these various controls. Because if I'm back on the home screen, and I see the content that other people or businesses are posting, I have the ability to do the, the same four actions that I can do over on Twitter. So whereas I had written that we have common features of social networks, I'm going to say we have here common actions of social networks. We have some way to reply or comment on what they write. Someone tweeted, so I can reply to the tweet. I posted on Google+, someone can reply or comment on my post. Same thing on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all of them have some of that ability. So that's basically the social media dialogue, the back and forth. You should take advantage of that. If someone is commenting on your content, you should follow through, you should follow up, you should keep the ball rolling, because that could lead to these other, um, these other interactions as well. We have, we have the like, which may be, may be known as the favorite, or it may be known as the heart. So that's kind of explanatory. You enjoyed something. Just like on, on Facebook. What happens on Facebook when you enjoy something? You give the like, the thumbs up. Now they've got all these other little icons that you can give to the Facebook post. But on, um, on Twitter, there's a little heart. You give it a favorite. Here on Google+, Plus, they call it the plus one. Do you notice that below all of these posts are these icons? And one of the icons is this plus one. That's like giving a like, or a heart, or a favorite. In this particular case, 23 plus one. It's 23 people have clicked like. It's a plus one. This little speech bubble is the comment. There's one comment on this post. And then the third one, the third interaction here, is the share. So we've got um, share. Sometimes they call it reshare. Sometimes they call it retweet. That's basically spreading a post to more people. Let me rearrange these a little bit, actually, because we also mentioned them last week. I'm going to write like first, then reply, then share. I'm putting them in that order because I feel that's their order of importance. Not that the like or the plus one is bad, it's just that it's the lowest level. I give a like, I give a plus one, I move on. The next level up is I reply. I click the reply button, think of something to say. Maybe it's just that I say great, or I say okay. But that's still effort that someone is doing. That effort could result in me getting a follow because right here, Samuel, for example, wrote three smiley faces. You say, yeah, that's so throwaway, just like the like. No, Samuel took an extra step to actually write or interact a little bit more here, so I could go follow Samuel. Just like when we talked about getting followers on Twitter, you follow an account on Google+, and some of them will follow you back. So follow backs. You follow an account, you get a follow back. You circle someone, you get a circle back. You build your audience. The fourth interaction, actually, then, is the follow. You get a new uh, captive audience member. Someone that liked your stuff so much that they'll follow you, which happens on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Peach, um, Rabadaba, all of these social networks out there, all of the ones you've heard of and that you haven't heard of. All of these four interactions, basically over and over, to some variation, there might be some that some have that another doesn't, but these are the big common ones. I want to give these and I want to get them. More importantly, probably, I want to get them. But you do get what you give. 
popularity breeds popularity on these networks. You giving a like could result in you getting a like. You following accounts could result in you getting follows. So give these and you'll get these. Not on a one-to-one -one ratio, unfortunately. Just because you gave seven likes doesn't mean you will get seven likes. Maybe you'll get two. Maybe you'll get eight. Just because you followed 20 people today doesn't mean you're going to get 20 by tomorrow. You might get seven by next week. You don't know. But you're active, you're going to do these things, you're going to get some of it back. And that's what you should see below all of these posts if you scroll down a bit. Let's see another one here. Um, this has got 99 plus ones. People really like that post. 14 comments, 12 shares. If you click on the timestamp of a post or the blank area, you will then see the post in total. And who has interacted? Here I've got the list of some of the recent comments. So all of these people that took the time to write something, there's there, there are accounts that I could hover over and then select follow. And some of them may follow me back. view activity, you'll also see this information here. View activity. So Karishma plus one, Ewitt plus one, Fatima, Chris, Victoria, all of these are people commented. So Subrata commented. Padmaja sh shared. We shared. So you can see all the people that are being active there, like Twitter. And the point of that is then if these people are interacting with content related to what my business is, they might be interested in my business. They just don't know about it. So if I, let's say that was a picture of some food, and I see that Victoria commented on it, well, I could go to Victoria's profile. You can click on anyone's profile. When you go there, you could see their stuff, and then what you could do further there is like their stuff, comment, share their stuff. They get that notification. Victoria, the bell up here on her account will say, Victor's Bakery plus, gave you a plus one. Victor's Bakery commented on your post. Victor's Bakery shared your post. They get notified that you exist, and therefore they can do the same to you. They can comment on your stuff. That's why I'm saying you need stuff. You need content on your profile before you try to get followers. So you've got stuff. She sees my stuff, she could then click plus one, she could then comment, she could then reshare, or better yet, follow. Because every profile you're going to see will have at the top a follow. Mine will have a follow when someone visits mine. So let's say I wanted to follow. I'll click follow. This is okay. You're gonna add, you're gonna add them to a circle. The default is that when I follow someone, they're going to get added to the following circle. I am following these people. They all go into one generic container, following. So when we share later about targeting, everyone in that container, in that circle, will get this content. But if I want to, I can add them to these different circles, more than one circle if I want. It doesn't notify them. It doesn't tell, it doesn't tell Victoria, Victor's Bakery added you to the VIP circle. It just said Victor's Bakery uh, circled you. So I've circled her, I followed her, so I'm going to start to see her content on my home screen, just like Twitter. So whenever you follow, you're going to see their content. So don't give follows away willy-nilly because you'll see all of this stuff and maybe there's stuff you don't want to see.
So on every thing that's posted on Google Plus, there are those actions. Uh, your posts will have those actions as well. You want to get some of those from people, so you give some, you'll get some. On your, well, on someone else's post, if you do click the timestamp and you get the menu, you'll see you have mute and report abuse. So if I look at this post, and a lot of people have enjoyed it. A lot of plus ones, some comments and shares. If I then add my own comment, all of the people that have already commented will get a notification that says Victor commented on this post. That's good. That's another way to get people's attention on Google+. If you comment on a post where people have been active with it, they will get a notification. We'll see here. Comment on active posts to get the attention of everyone in the chain of comments. There's other people that have commented. I'll comment. They all get a notification. It's not obtrusive. It just says, Victor commented on this post. There's a dialogue going on. At the least, people ignore it. They just move on, they see it, okay, great. They move on with their lives. At the best, you get something out of it. You get a reply, you get a plus one, because we can plus one everyone's comments. I get a plus one. I could get a follow. That's the best result. This could lead to actions, which are right here, right? Likes, replies, shares, follows. Pretty much the same from last time on Twitter. Follow accounts. Let's see about follow relevant accounts. To get follow-backs. I'm not simply going to select all of these people, follow Mickey, follow Max, follow Serge, follow Terry. I'm not just going to click follow to them all. I could, but I won't because most likely they're going to um, share content that maybe I don't really want to see. Even though they've commented on something that's perhaps related to what I care about, I still want to think about following accounts that I'm that I know I'm going to see their stuff, so so be aware of that. Now the point of me showing here, okay, mute. Uh, when you become part of this comment chain and more people start to comment, then you'll get the notification. Janet commented, Bill commented, Juan commented. You're going to start to see the activity also. If you don't want to see that activity anymore, you can go to the menu of the post and select mute. So what you've done there basically is you've turned off those notifications. You are no longer going to be told this was clicked on, this was followed up on, etc., etc. You'll still be able to interact, of course, but you just won't get notified of it anymore. And then you can, of course, do be a good citizen of Google Plus and report abuse. If you click on that, there'll be a whole process of um, selecting what's wrong with it. Is it abusive? Is it violent? Is it, you know, is it bad for the community and such? But um, it is a good idea to be um, to be actively kind of helping out, also muting or reporting abuse. Uh, 
on your own posts, if you click your own posts, the timestamp, you get your options, which we saw was delete, edit post. Let's look at these other options here. Pin to profile. This is like Twitter in that you wrote something and it's going to get pushed down out of the screen when you write something else. All the networks are like that. The newest stuff is at the top, it pushes down the old stuff. It pushes it away. It goes out of sight, out of mind. Well, if you want something to always be on your users' minds, if you want something always to be visible to them when they see your profile, you can pin it to your, po to your profile. If I click that, and someone visits my, my profile, that'll be the top thing they see. It's pinned. You can only have one thing at a time. Because adding a pin is to make it important, and if you pin everything, everything's important and nothing's important. So other options that you have. Disable comments, disable reshares. This is a way for you to guide the conversation. Uh, whereas with Twitter, it can get away from you. Your hashtag could be co-opted and it could go off into directions that you didn't expect. With Google+, you can create content, post it on, on Google+, and then disable comments, meaning people will not be able to write something here. I think that's too far. I do, again, I recommend people do the, uh, the dialogue the dialogue aspect in that you let people comment and that you reply. If you disable comments, there's no, there's no back and forth, there's no dialogue. I think that is valuable. So I don't recommend disable comments. You could if you want to, of course. The way I do it for businesses is I leave it normal and then if someone comments and they comment something weird or dumb or off topic or mean or whatever, you will have the option to then click delete next to the person's message. You'll get the notification up here, of course. It'll say, John Smith commented on your post. I'm going to go look at it, and then, whoops, that's off topic, it's weird, it's racist, it's sexist, it's something, I'm going to delete it. And you can, it's your content, you're controlling your message. I think that's much better than um, simply disabling it so that there's no dialogue going on. Yes, it's more work, you then have to go in and be a moderator, be a cop to some degree, but I think that's going to be better in the long term. With your own posts, you also have the ability to do the disable reshares. And on that one, I don't recommend that one either. The reshare is that you posted something, it's amazing, you want more people to see it. You've got 10 followers, but one of those followers has 100 followers. They could reshare your post, meaning your post will basically get copied and shared to their account. So now I've reached potentially 110 people, my original 10 and their 100. If I don't want that, I can disable reshares, and there's no more button there for them to reshare. Yes? Um, it seems like that's the only way you can really kind of get some privacy here. So if you, if you share something to one particular circle and you really don't want that information to go beyond, they can still copy and paste it and tell other people, but at least they can't automatically just send it out to everyone. Yes. Um, because once you put something into a circle, it's only for that circle, but it will tell them. I believe it tells them if if you get something to your own circle and you're going to try to share it, I believe Google Plus tells you, be careful, this was sent in a circle. Are you sure you want to share it publicly? people can easily click yes and send it still. But if you disable that share, that's a way to keep it more private within one group of people. We've got move to post to collections, so we'll talk about collections soon. Uh, but one thing to say about it now is that with collections, if you add something to a collection, uh, it kind of behaves differently than a regular post. So. We'll get to those nuances in a moment, but these are the actions that you can do upon your own posts. Just click the timestamp of your 
post or click the empty spot and then you'll get the menu. Now, remember what I'm saying about comment on something, reply to something, be active. That's to make someone aware of you because you have zero followers. Something's happened here. I didn't plan this, but do you see I have a notification? Something happened. Maybe it's someone in class. Thank you. Maybe it's someone across the world. Hopefully it's safe for work. So I'm going to click on that to see what happened here. Victoria added you back. See that? A random person on Google Plus. I added them. They added me back. Now, it might have been better if I had actually followed a person that might be more interested in my product. But I'm just showing you that if you follow an account, you'll probably get a, you could get a follow back. There you go. So I'm building my follow empire. Question. So are there um, third-party uh, software programs that automatically can follow you back on Google Plus, or did she happen to be looking for account? I believe there is software out there that uh, can do this automatically. Uh, so I think this was legitimate because from what I saw her posting. It's all cat stuff. She's been pets and stuff, so it's probably original. And so um, she probably followed me legitimately. It could be a spam account, uh, and I could have a spam follower, but still, uh, this tactic works in general. And because there's an app for it, most likely she got the notification on her phone and simply from there it's very easy to follow back and because google is google plus is a google property and android is an android property so google plus is built into android phones and it's going to notify people so she might have gotten it there on her android and just clicked follow all right so Whereas over on um, on um, Twitter, we talked about following people. We'll get follow backs. That works here too. On Twitter, we talked about okay, instead of following people, what about if you interact with people? You can get some interactions back. That works here too. That's what I that's what I did here. Um, a big difference that we have here then on Google Plus is communities and collections. Let's talk now a little more in detail in about collections and communities. Uh, before that, though, any general questions so far? Anything we've talked about? Okay, let's check out collections. On the left side, click collections. It's going to show me featured, following, and yours. This is random featured content, meaning interesting content, so you could be featured here at some point. You don't have to have 10,000 followers to be featured here. You could have 20 followers but a really cool collection, and whatever algorithm or curators see it and then push you to the top so that you can get found, and this can go on and on. So one idea is, uh, did I already say anything about collections here? No. Okay, so collections, create collections to entice Oh. <laughs> collections to entice uh, you to get follows or actions I'm gonna say because that's the that's the reply the retweet the re reshare etc so create these because you could be featured here and just because there's already one photography collection doesn't mean there cannot be 20 more so you can go ahead and create your own one but here's some featured ones I'm not following any. They'll be listed here. And yours, which of you yours that you've created. Let's create a collection or two uh, to see how this works, and then um, we'll see its value. So I'm under the collection screen. I went to the yours tab and I'll click create a collection. We have a few things to fill in. What's the name of the collection? I believe there is a limit to how long this thing can be, but obviously 
that sort of a name like that might be too big. So let's say this is um, Victor's Bakery and I'm doing here um, DIY uh, home cooking. Think in terms of what people might be searching for on Google Plus or regular Google search. What might people be searching for? Those could be the keywords that I use to create my collection. So tech reviews, um, low-cost recipes, um, locations or uh, vacation destinations, San Diego. So I can create as many collections as I want, name them whatever I want, and I can edit these to some degree after I create them. Let's say I'm creating DIY home cooking. Visible to public, specifically only my circles who I've connected with, only myself which is custom, uh, I mean only myself which is private, or custom which is from my circles here only a specific circle or a specific person can see it. I can make collections very exclusive. Usually you'll want it public. There's of course many reasons why you might want to choose the other ones depending on your business, what you're trying to do online. But notice, one set can't be changed. So if you set this to private, you know, only you, you can't change it back to public. If you share it with a specific circle, you can no longer share it to anyone else. I recommend public. And then we have a spot for 80 characters. A tagline, more keywords, another sentence or two to write for when people search to help to find you. So I'm going to say only the best uh, do it yourself tips and tricks for home cooking. Yes? Can you delete the collection? You can. Uh, when you delete it, does it delete the stuff inside of it? Um, I have to check on that. I don't quite recall. But you can, you can delete a collection and I have to check what happens to the stuff inside of it a little later. So here's a little bit of setup. I'll click Create. And then we have a little bit more customization. So I can change a picture. If I click here, I've got some built-in pictures. And then of course I've got upload my own picture. I've got my own perfect picture for my particular DIY home cooking. I want to add it. So if you've got a picture, you can add your own picture. You can do a little color coding here, although it's this it's these preset uh, these preset colors. You can add your own custom color. Again, visible to public. And then people that have you in circles automatically follow this collection, yes or no. I recommend yes, and what this is doing is that I've got seven collections and someone follows my main account. They automatically then followed all seven of my collections. I'm getting more people to see my collections. I think that's good. If you have it turned off, they will follow my main account, but not necessarily the concept that's content that's been separated out to collections. They can choose to then follow, pick and choose to follow my collections. I've got seven collections. If I turn this off, then they can choose, I like this collection to follow, and this one, but not that one. If you leave this on, all your collections will be followed. So if you make things regarding cooking and photography and politics, but not a lot of people are interested in the politics one, they will automatically follow your politics one, which they can unfollow. But that will automatically get you more follows for all your collections, which may be good or bad. I usually leave it on. 
I'll click save. So I've got one follower, Victoria, who followed me earlier, also becomes automatically a follower of this collection. If I click back on the menu here and just go back to communities, so now featured following yours. If I go back into my community, here's where I can add something to it. I have this menu here to edit the collection. Who are the followers of my collection? Uh, delete the collection, get help share this collection, so send it off to Facebook or Twitter, copy the link. How does that work in the metadata to the Facebook page? Can you share it to the Facebook page metadata page? Or only to your personal Sometimes, well, oftentimes, unfortunately, actually, it often goes to your personal one. Facebook has some kind of quirk that often sends your content right to your personal one. I don't know why it's still not smart enough. I cynically think they're doing it on purpose. But uh, there's always a way to share. If this, if this share button this way isn't working, you can always manually go to your Facebook, log into your business page, and copy and paste your link to share it. More steps, but that way you know you've sent what you, what you want to do to the right place. Yes? Um, it used to be YouTube's choice of Google ranking that whoever, when you, if you posted the same content to five different sites, kind of it worked against you, but I think they changed that. But whoever, whoever you posted it first would kind of be the authoritative source in, in their eyes. Do you know where, where all that stands? It's still a little bit of both. You still want to post original content as much as possible, so if you duplicate your own content, that is detrimental still to some point. The thing about the originator of it still is important. But depending how you set it up, because there's something known as the canonical link, what is the link that is canon, you know, the official origin of something, and if that's not set up properly, it's not really helping you. So still the short answer is try not to repost or, uh, you know, reuse your same content over and over and over. Try to create new original content as much as possible. And I've heard if you're going to use it, change the first and the last paragraph. Is it canon? Nope. That's fake. Everything in the middle, the, the search engines, Google and everything, can analyze things in milliseconds. Yeah. So just because your first and last paragraph has changed, that's like 1% of a change. And Google can analyze your whole 5,000 paragraphs in a millisecond. So there's no point in just changing those two things. Of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let me do a quick test here. I will add some content to my collection. I've got some stuff, some, some great stuff in this collection. And all my followers would, of that collection would see that. And so let's say then at a certain point I want to delete that. So I'll go in, well, let me confirm something. On my profile, people see my collection, they see my posts, and they see what I've posted shared to this collection. If I share it, if I don't share it to a collection, it'll say it's public or it's on this circle or whatever. But I've shared this to a community. So this is marked as being shared to a community, I mean a, a collection. It's on my collection. Let me see what happens then. Go up here and delete collection. Deleting a collection is permanent. If you delete all posts, will also get deleted. So I have to confirm it. Before I delete it, I have to confirm. If I delete a collection, everything inside of it is deleted. So be careful about that. Go back on my profile. It no longer shows. When I refresh it, the, the items in the collection. So that I, I wasn't sure on that, but now we've, now we've confirmed. And it tells you there, delete a collection and everything inside of it goes away. So then be careful when you see anything that you've posted. Wait a minute, there it is. It just became public. Hmm. 
I was going to say is that when oh, I refreshed again and now it's gone. So yeah, it just might be a little slow. I guess it I guess it does go, go away. So what I was getting at is that you have another option on your posts that when you click, remember it says move to collection. You might be tempted. Let me put all my stuff into nice organizational units, folders, collections. But if you delete a collection, it's gonna delete those items. You mean like from Twitter into Google Plus? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I was just wrapping up with that discussion. I apologize. Well, you know, I mean, if you're going to be constantly needing to upload different things on different social media, if you post something, Facebook, you will automatically get this, you can upload it on Facebook. I mean, do you recommend repurposing it for the different social media? Yeah. Uh, there's a fine line between the earlier question and this question, and there's some overlap, but what I'll say here is uh, it's okay to share or repurpose uh, content from one network to another. However, what's the point? And I mean that, uh, I don't mean it in a mean way, I mean it in that if you're posting the same thing on Twitter, and Google Plus and Facebook. What's the point and how are you going to get followers to follow you on Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook? If they follow you on Facebook and it's the same content, why would they further go to the effort to follow you on Twitter? So a happy medium is share with variation, which is I'm going to share a link, the same link to all my networks. Great. but I'm going to maybe add a different picture on each post or different explanatory text. So something different. It's the same end result, but something different maybe to entice people. That I kind of recommend more than just simply the same content throughout. Yes? Do you find that, um, in terms of the users, do you find that people kind of use one account primarily? Or do they, do most people kind of follow several? Uh, good point. Hard, hard to say. I think from what I've seen personally, I think from what I've seen, people stick with one that they like. Um, it would make our jobs easier that everyone follows everything, but there's only so much time and attention span. So when we work with clients, usually we are posting uh, different things on different networks. We do do overlap in that it's the same thing with variation to all the networks just to try to reach more people because that person's not following us on Facebook and this person's not following us on YouTube so we just try to reach as many people as possible because a person is on a network for a reason, uh, a regular person. A business is on every network because they want to reach more people but a person is on a network because I like Twitter that it's short, it's to the point it's funny, I see memes. I like Facebook because it's more ubiquitous, all my friends and family are there. I like YouTube because I love video. I'm on Pinterest because I love uh, pictures, square pictures, whatever. So people are on the different networks for a purpose and usually they're not going to follow you on all the networks but you still have to try to reach as many people. Do you know why people are primarily on Instagram? I wouldn't say that. I would say Instagram only has about 400 million users. So I wouldn't say that's primary. I would say uh, Facebook. People are primarily on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I hate Facebook. But a lot of people are like that too. So everyone's on every network. All your customers are on every network. You just have to try to find them. But the thing is that each network sort of has its own character and style. People that are on you know, perhaps on Google Plus might lean toward a certain demographic and Pinterest to another demographic, so that's why you want to try to reach as most. Okay. Actually, that was my question. What's the demographic for Instagram? Well, it's, you're going to see a lot of answers for this, but from, from what I understand and from what I've read, here's some demographic information. This is not always going to be applicable or accurate, I should say, because it changes. Let's start Pinterest. Uh, this one uh, primarily skews toward female. So if you have a, uh, a product that is targeted to females, this is a best network to get to. Google Plus, 
seems to skew male uh, techie um, Instagram seems to go young not necessarily male or female just young younger because it's more short attention span immediate and so forth it seems which is uh, a lot of the character also for Twitter seems to skew young across the sexes this one is, is much more global though you can reach a much more global audience I've I've read and I've seen with Twitter uh, and then Facebook everyone for good and bad you can reach everyone on Facebook but we'll see when we get to Facebook next week it could be a needle in a haystack um, so I see great results for just about any kind of company on any of these networks, but these skew toward these. And we can probably look up articles about the latest and maybe see how things have gone. No, it's still very much, and that one's also... Um, that's also a lot younger. Um, the thing about Snapchat that for a long time it was it was a lot of um, it was very it, it was it was a very much a utopia for the people that used it in that it was separated from everyone else. No one had heard about Snapchat. It was just your friends. It was young people. There were no businesses and advertisers on it. And now because everyone can make money out of these networks, now businesses are getting on Snapchat. The character of Snapchat is changing. Snapchat itself wants to show more businesses because they want to make money off of that. So Snapchat is still very relevant. Uh, we don't get a chance to talk about it here, uh, but in my other class at Southwestern College, we do. We do do one lesson on it, uh, and uh, it's just another another thing to learn and another thing to to use. It's still relevant. Periscope is that being just connected to Twitter, or is this kind of Well, Twitter, uh, the Twitter company owns Periscope, so it really promotes it a lot. But you, Periscope is, is its own network. It can it exist rather independently from Twitter. Um, it's just that it's very much tied to it. It's just another another social network, and that one's focused on video, live video. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got collections and you should use them and add content to them because eventually you could get some featured top billing and such. Or if people are searching, your collection could appear and get follows. What are you going to post to them? Again, is up to you, but it's a mixture of 80% your own stuff, 20% other people's stuff. But always thinking about in terms, well, how is this going to get me a reply? How is this going to get me a like? How is this going to get me a follow? And then the follow is the is the big one because that's a captive audience. So that when you when you post, sale this Saturday, use this coupon, your 700 followers of that collection could see that co that coupon and follow through. 700 could see it, but then what's one percent of 700? Seven, seven people could be the actual ones that buy the product. That's why more followers is more better. Any questions on collections before we, we move on? Yes? How do you, excuse me if we already covered this, but uh, how do you get to be featured and uh, how do you get a good place in um, It must be some sort of proprietary algorithm because Maybe they say it somewhere in help. I haven't seen it, but from what I've read and, and educated myself about, it's some proprietary algorithm. It doesn't matter how many followers you have, because right here, Fatima, if we look at her, she has 1,200 followers, but 15,000 followers of that community. So it's, it's all about the specificity of what you're sharing. You're going to find your audience. You're going to find the beer audience that really likes that, and then you got 64,000 followers there. You're going to create content that people like Earth, and then you're going to get, or Laguna Beach, 69,000. Uh, 
So this is always going to be random to some degree. There's probably some trick that they use internally. I don't know it. I haven't quite read any documentation that tells you what the trick is. Because if that gets out, then everyone's going to do the trick, and everyone's going to be number one. And then no one's going to be number true. one. That's true. But they're Google Ads, so is there a way to pay them money? One of the things that's interesting about Google Plus is that it's very insulated from any of their ad stuff. You don't, unlike Twitter, you don't pay to boost your content. Unlike Facebook, you don't pay to get it viewed by more people. You don't use AdSense here. It's its own sort of insular network that doesn't rely on advertising yet because Google makes all its money off on Google Search or Google AdSense and such. So here it's still going to be more about your great content connect with more people, the more people see you, popularity breeds popularity, and then eventually whatever the algorithm deems will then make you show up here. And there's always search. Yes? Do the individual posts within a collection have their own URL? So you could promote that particular post, or you just promote the whole collection? You can do either, because any screen on Google Plus basically is going to be some sort of link. So I'm looking at the Ireland collection, that's the link for that. So I can share that, I can also share it this way here. Copy the link. But when you're looking at any particular post, you know, you look at its timestamp, notice it's telling me that's that link to that post in the Google Plus server. So you can still get a link for that one post in Google Plus. So it could, it could, um, not, it could be instead of a blog link. Sure. So right there, I'm in some other web browser, I'm not logged in or anything, copied and pasted the address, and it took me directly to that post. So everything on Google Plus has a specific link. They used to have it up here. Get a link to your, with your own posts. So did they take that away? There was the ability for your own post to copy the link. Yeah, there was something that says get link on the old Google Plus. Well, you can still get it, just it's not obvious, but that's the link to my particular post right there. Okay, so I like I like collections because uh, they help you organize your content and the people that care about a topic could find you. What I like much better, 10 times better, are communities. Let's look at communities. The thing about communities is basically here is, out of the box, a huge captive audience. Here's the theory of communities. I join the psychology community so that I can post to it, and I've reached 523,000 people. I have zero followers, but if I join a community, a member, I click here, I can post into that community. And in theory, 522,000 people will see that. I can't post to a community until I join. So if I, if I go look at the beauty community, 906,000. If I click there, I see a lot of great stuff. I've got a beauty salon. I want to post here. I'll reach 900,000 people. There's no button to share yet until I join. So communities are 10 times better, but there's a lot of caveats. So let's make some notes here. I highly recommend communities. More than collections. If you say I've only got enough time in the day to do what I need to do, stick with communities rather than collections. Um, however, join communities with at least 1,000 members. These that I've just shown you had hundreds of thousands. But there's communities, because you can create a community, there's communities that have 10 members. That's not sustainable. 100 members, that's not sustainable. 500? Eh, maybe. 700, we're getting there. Try to join communities with at least a thousand members. That's a, that's a gene pool large enough for you to have possibly interaction. That's one thing to think about.
another thing. Read the rules. Communities are made by the people that use Google+. They're not made from Google by Google+, employees. They're not made by Google+. I can create a community. If I look at the communities screen, I have recommended, I'm a member, and yours. So I can easily create communities. People always ask me, can I create a community? Yes, you can. Should I? No. Don't create your own communities because now you're going to need to start to build an audience to come to my community. It's amazing. Join it. Post to it. Make it active. That's a lot harder to do. I don't recommend you create your own communities. I recommend you join communities. Be active in them. Make a name for yourself there. You could create a community. I don't recommend it. Because then you have to be a moderator. All of these communities, they were created by someone on Google+. A business or a person. And most likely, they have rules. So if I go look at the fashion community, somewhere it's going to say most likely on the left side, right here, about the community. It says, a year-round discussion surrounding fashion. Join in on the conversation. Community guidelines. The maid team is super excited to read all your comments. Remember, this board is for positive fashion and beauty-related topics. Please refrain from posting personal posts and or inappropriate comments, however they define inappropriate. We've worked hard to create a fun and friendly interactive platform for all. Okay, doesn't seem too stifling. There are communities out there that are very stifling. Here's a one million member community, fitness. Let's see what their rules are. is for everyone who is interested in fitness, weight loss, or gain, staying active and staying healthy. We support each other, share tips, advice, etc. Fitness community, get inspired, what to post. Whatever you feel is appropriate and important to you. Personally in fitness or related. Here we share routines, house rules. Keep your posts on topic, decent and respectful. Keep them in English so we can all understand them. Thank you and welcome. Banning offenses. Put ads or spam, however they define an ad. Add like reviews. Link dumping, which is simply just posting your link without any content, just adding a link today and one hour later and one tomorrow, just dumping your links in there. Promotional posts. Commercial links. Reshares from other communities. Come and read my blog type posts. So this community seems to be very strict. So that's why I'm saying here, join communities, but read the rules. Worst case scenario, you break one of these rules, a moderator will probably tell you, oh, uh, please don't post stuff like this. Next level of elevation, they remove it from the community. Worst level, they remove you from the community. And you just lost access to one million people. And unfortunately, there's very little recourse to get back to a community if you've been kicked out of it. Because these communities are made by regular people. They're not made by Google. They're not endorsed by Google. They're not run or protected by Google. As long as they fill, they fit the general requirements of Google+, Plus, which is, you know, no hate speech and violence and bullying and that sort of thing, these communities can exist and be uh, moderated however the dictators, however the moderators want them to be. So if the moderators act like dictators, and be very strict, Google can't do anything about it. I've personally experienced that. I've been a member of a community that I thought I followed the rules, I posted content that I thought was on topic, the moderator kept removing it. I kept on the community, I posted a few more things, eventually I found out I was removed from the community. And I thought I was totally on topic. And you know me, I'm a nice guy, I follow the rules. So I went over to the Google Plus help community. There's a community run officially from Google Plus it's called Google Plus Help or something. Google Help. There's an official... Well, there's the Google Plus Small Business. Here it is, the Google Plus Help. These two are run by official Google. I went to the, the Help. I had screenshots and documentation to show. I'm a member of this community. I'm posting on topic. I follow the rules. This person kicked me out. What can you do? He said, we can't do anything. That person runs their community how they want. As long as it's not breaking the rules, there's nothing we can do. So I lost access to that community. I'm 
telling you that so that you don't lose access. Read the rules, follow the community, lurk in the community for a bit to get a feel of it, because this is like a classic message board of the ancient days of the of online, right? Before the web and all of this Snapchat and all of that, these were communities with, with small groups of people that cared about a topic. Someone kept everyone on topic. They deleted bad posts and they recommended good posts and all of that. This is the new generation of it. And so there can be one or multiple moderators. And the one that I was a member of had one person moderating it all. One iron fist. And so some of these others could have multiple ones. And therefore it pays. You know, look at a community. Read the rules. It might tell you also who's the moderator. Right here, Google Plus is the owner of this community. Who are the moderators? What are the rules? Read the rules. Follow the rules. Communities are very good if you want research. Yes. They're very good. You can go in here, research a topic, see what everyone's posting about, get uh, advice or ideas. And you don't even have to join. Notice, I'm not joined. I can still look here. I just can't comment on anything. I can plus one stuff. I'm not joined to the community, but I can still interact that way. I can't reply, but I don't have to join. I would say, read the rules, follow the rules, lurk in the community a bit to get a feel for it. So look at what people post. Maybe a couple days or whatever and see what it's like a week and then decide about um, actually you posting yourself. Because that one about fitness sounded very strict. Like I wanted to put a link to my blog where I give the top 10 best tips for health. A moderator more than one might take that that's an ad and that's against our rules best case scenario they remove it worst case scenario they remove you so always check those rules and out of the 20 or so that I've joined and I'll show you a list of the ones I like again I've only been removed on one I have on occasion once or twice been told well, that's a little off topic and then that's the worst of it um, I did have one post removed one time, but I've posted, I've been on Google Plus since 2011, so I have gotten very little negativity out of it. So under um, communities, you might also see some of them say ask to join. Let's see, do any pop up here? Some of them say ask to join, and that one is going to be, you click ask to join, Someone in the community gets a notification, a moderator, and then they go to your profile and check you out. They go to see what's, what did they write about themselves, what are they posting, how do they write, and so forth, and then they might allow you to join. So that's an even more exclusive community. Yeah? If you're setting up pages for, um, I guess, anyway, for, for a client, mm -hmm. do you do it through their Google account or do you do PMD? I do it through mine because we'll get to this in a, in a bit. But remember, I said we can switch back and forth between accounts. Um, we can switch back and forth. My icon is up here. I'm on Victor's Bakery. But I can switch between clients. So I did use one particular email, one particular account to create all of these clients' accounts and I can just jump back and forth between them. And, and then can they also log into it from there? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about adding moderators as well. Okay. So I can manage multiple business pages, and each of those pages is separate from everything else, so each of those business pages can, can follow different communities, nothing overlaps between accounts, no one knows of one account who controls it or who moderates it and such. So every all of these are separate. None of these know what the other are doing. And uh, one manager of one doesn't have control of another. And swap dots, it show, shows you as the owner? If I choose it. It, do, it doesn't show that. It can be private. 
none of these can say who created it if you don't want it to. So if any of these communities say ask to join, that's why I'm saying you want some content to entice people to, um, to allow you. Let me show you a few communities that I like. These don't apply to everyone. But here's a few that I like that you might be interested in. Uh, so there's one called Black and White Photography that's really good if you've got any sort of, you know, photography and such, any sort of, sort of artistic endeavors that you're doing, maybe you are a photographer, wedding photographer, whatever, black and white photography, 73,000 members, uh, for something funny to look at, cats at Google, uh, what else, there's food photography, that's a big community, so if you've got any sort of um, uh, food photography that you do for yourself or for clients, that's a big one right there. This is kind of a weird one that I, li that I like to recommend, Funny Pictures and Videos. It's got 2 million members. It's one of the biggest ones uh, because it's, it's, it's a little weird to recommend in a sense because it goes the opposite here. Join communities with at least 1,000, and there could be a corollary, corollary to it. Jo don't join too large communities, and too large is subjective. But 2 million members could be one of the ones that's too large. The problem of joining a really large community is you're going to get drowned out. With so many people, 2 million people, a lot of stuff gets posted. So your stuff could disappear faster. Because something new pushes down something old. So something like this with 2 million members here, and also this Android community, 1.8 million, I do get good results in that people... Um, people do interact with what I post, but then it uh, gets drowned out quickly. I do get a flash of activity, but then it gets drowned out. If you're into programming and such, there are communities like JavaScript, IT professionals, I like the Google Plus photographers community. So all of these say how many posts have been added since the last time I viewed the community. Because when, I, when, I join, when you join a community, you see all of the posts on your home screen, or you can go specifically to a community and only see the posts of that community. There's a blog community. I think on this one you have to ask to join. There's two of them, I one of those two. One's got 63,000, one's got 110,000. You can join more than one about the same thing, sure. Be careful though, read the rules. Most likely they're saying don't cross post. Don't post the same thing across multiple communities. How do they know that? There are, there are moderators here that spend all their time moderating. So they're gonna check out what you've done and see, and, and see if you've shared your thing to more than one place. It does happen. So if you're into blogging, you can go there, programming ones, graphic design, specific companies, the Microsoft community, the Micon community, social media strategy community. These are kind of strict. But these two right here, social media professionals and social media strategy communities, and SEO community. So again, try, I'm trying to join these that have lots of members. One, uh, at least 1,000. And I did break my own rule about don't create communities. I've created a community called Tutorials, and I've got 27 people on it, but no one's active. I'm just testing it out, and I'm, I'm showing you it doesn't make a lot of sense to make your own communities unless you really invest a lot of time in nurturing the community. So that's the big secret that I think is valuable to share about Google Plus in that it uh, it really works well with with uh, communities.
And the more you use it and follow communities, the more it'll suggest them to you. So I get the most results for clients on Google Plus using communities. I get uh, results on Facebook and Twitter and such when we pay for it. But if you don't want to put that into a budget, Google Plus communities for free get you good, uh, good results. It doesn't work for everyone, unfortunately, because there are some clients that are very specific that are hard to kind of figure out what communities to join. So an example, this client over here, Swap Dots, they, they sell uh, they sell customizable wristbands and buttons and stuffed animals and such. So, okay, this one was kind of a little tricky what to join here. In this particular client, creative ideas, there's a funny community, home decor, art, sorry, that's recommended, member, arts and crafts, various crafts, DIY crafts, everyday fun, funny, handmade. So just trying to join communities that are related or like one degree of separation related and then you'll find a community that you can share to. So any questions uh, about communities? We, we're gonna we're gonna end very soon to have a little lab time, so I'll mention a couple more things, and we'll wrap it up. Uh, again, uh, we created this business account on top of a personal one. You can create as many business pages as you want. After you've created at least one, you should be able to then switch back and forth between them up on the icon up there. I want to switch over to this client. I can click it, and now I'm managing that client. After you've created one, you should have a list of them here. You should have then a list of all your pages once you've created at least one, which is just taking you back to business.google.com. So if you don't have, if you don't have all my pages, you can always get back to it via that address, business.google.com. How do you it, uh, it is this, it, having a brand page or a location, creating an entity here is how that helps you get, how, how it helps you show up on that um, on this special box up here. These are related to Google Plus pages because a person, depending if you created a business location, people can give you reviews. So that's what's showing up there. So simply creating this, filling it out, using it, that is going to start to get you on the road to be visible like this on a Google search as opposed to everyone else over here that I might not pay attention to. Let's say you wanted more than one person to help you manage the business, the Google Plus page, everyone will be able to log in with their own information and manage it to, to help out. Um, so what you want to do is go to... Uh, I know this one's we kind of made it a little tricky. Let's see here. Let me go to Home and then Settings. Let's see, where did they put it? here yeah it's up here okay you're wherever you're at I'm on home you click on your icon at the top right and select settings there the settings there are different than the settings on the left if 
if you click on settings, a bunch of settings, from this settings screen, just FYI, at the very bottom, there is delete. So if at the end of the day you no longer want this page, or if you don't want it in the future, you can go through the process of delete. It's under settings. But within the settings screen, we have managers. Under managers, there's one manager, me, the owner. I can add more managers. So if I add a name or an email, I can add them. This assumes the person has an account on Google+, like a Gmail. If they don't, it'll ask them to create one, like on Twitter, like on Facebook. If you're going to manage a Facebook, you need a Facebook account. If you're going to manage a Google+, Plus, you need a Google+, Plus account. But here I can start to put in a person's name. I'll make Victoria the manager, sure. Invite. She'll get the notification, Victor invited you to manage Victor's bakery. Yes or no? She says yes, she's a manager. I can put an email address, john at johnsmith.com. If they're not on Google+, I'll select there to send them an email. Google will send them an email saying, you're being invited to manage this Google Plus page. It's going to ask them then to sign in, to create an account, a Google Plus account. So they'll have to do that. And then we've got add them as a manager or as a communications manager. Uh, let me check here exactly the difference. Some of these have different powers. Managers have all the capabilities of an owner except for per sensitive things like deleting or managing access. So if you put people as a manager, they will not be able to delete the account, only you as the owner. They will not be able to add more people. Communications manager are able to edit information about the business, add videos and stuff, but they can't do these other powerful things. So these two are pretty safe to add people to. Owner is the one that has the full power to delete the page, to remove people from the page. But there's only one at a time. So if I had other people here, I could select someone else and say, make them the manager. I mean, make them the owner. So I'm going to lose the owner power, someone else gets it, and that other person then could, in theory, delete me from a managerial role and delete the whole page. So this is under settings, dealing with managers, and also deleting the account. So there's, of course, some other things that we could talk about, like Hangouts and YouTube and all of that. We don't quite have time, but that's something that you can explore. We've covered a lot about Google+, and the value of it is that it helps, get you the leg, helps you get the leg up above the competition. So, fish restaurant. So if you want to appear like this, you have an account on Google+. That's a way to get you there help get you there. And you'll be visible on Google search, you will use it as a social network to find more people, followers, and build a captive audience. So any general questions on anything we've talked about today? Yes? You mean delete a manager? Or you want to delete that business page? Is that what you were showing Yeah, let me just confirm. I'll go back to settings. I'm under settings here, and at the very bottom it says delete page. So it's to delete this whole business page. Because to delete managers, that's under managers right there. You don't have the option of... Okay, I'll no, check. Maybe it's because I have some other managers involved in my mm. business page, and I just have to go back. That could be check out what's going on under the Managers tab, and if you're not an owner, you might not be able to delete it. Okay. Maybe.
Any other questions? Yes. I'm going to have to demonstrate this, but just in case you know, if I if I have a hangout and I record it, can that automatically post to my Google page, or is that a separate? I believe it does automatically post it. I believe there's the option to further post it. So you'll always have the ability to post it after the fact or as soon as you finish with it. Yes, on the fifth day of the class, the last day of the class, we'll focus on a lot of the nuances of YouTube and how they both interact because it's all one part, part of all one account, the Google account. So we'll get to YouTube eventually. So that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time. We didn't have some last time. We'll have some lab time until about 9.30 if you need it, if you need any individual help. At this point, then, you can keep playing with this or delete it. Do what you'd like with it, and um, we'll wrap it up. And when we come back next time, we'll talk about Facebook, the good and the bad about Facebook, the tips and trick techniques of Facebook, and um, we'll do it again next time.